All right, we're concluding on age dating methods, radioactive especially. Going back here to the top of BibleStudyManuals.net, K57.htm. Conclusions on radioactive dating methods. It's been high, quite enlightening because it was remarkable in my earlier education. Wow, all of these dating methods, we know how old things are. And now, after learning this, it's, there's so many other things that are presumed to be true which are not that make these dating methods completely unreliable, completely unreliable. Especially the older it gets, the more uh, error there is, the wider margin of error. So we're looking for, we've gone through this much, let's go to this sentence here, you can search for it. It thus becomes evident that age measurements by radioactivity are not nearly so precise nor so reliable as most writers imply. That's being kind. The great variety of possible experimental errors and physical alterations in the quantities being measured have all combined to produce such a high degree of statistical scatter in the results of the computations, especially when compared with geochronological implications of the associated stratigraphy. In other words, lots of stuff happened that would have skewed the results. A lot of catastrophic events, cataclysms, that the great majority of the measurements have had to be rejected as useless for the desired purposes. So relatively only a handful has been acceptable. So if you're going to try something 100 times and you get three credible results, how do you know they're credible? The other 97 are wrong. And you say, well, it matches what I expected. Well, that's a belief system. That's not science. But, of course, it will be measured by the evolutionists that, it will be answered by the evolutionists that even though experimental errors may be important, of course they are, the measurements are still sufficiently accurate to give, in most cases, ages of at least the right order of magnitude. According to what they believe, the other, 90, the other 97 are, are unacceptable. You've thrown them out. Thrown them out. For example, a measurement indicating an age, say, of 1 billion years, evolutionists say, could hardly be an error by more than a factor of 10. Really? And this could give hundreds, give 100 million years. Okay, you're just slapping these time periods around. Nothing remotely comparable to the few thousand years implied by the Bible. Wow. You know, if a pilot wants to fly 10,000 miles and he's one degree off, it won't get anywhere near its destination. Furthermore, it will be maintained that even though any given age measurement may be completely erroneous due to leaching or emanation or some other effect, there are many cases critics maintain, they're making this up, now known where the age estimate has been checked by two or more different methods independently. It would seem improbable that the elements concerned would have had been altered in such a way as to continue to give equal ages. Therefore, such agreement between independent measurements would seem to be strong evidence that alteration had not occurred and that the indicated age is therefore valid. It's like throwing dice up in the air. Uh, you know, you're never going to get the three, two, the, the ten times in a row, you're not going to get ten times in a row the same. Well, if you do it long enough, you will. But that doesn't make it reliable. You might have to spend your whole life throwing dice to get ten in a row. We reply, however, that the biblical outline of earth history with the geologic framework provided thereby would lead us to postulate exactly this state of the radioactivity evidence every single time. Because the biblical evidence of a worldwide flood and the uh, blocking of the radiation rates before the flood with the canopy of ice over the earth, well, added, when you add the fact that it in, it's plausible every single time. Catastrophic event, all kinds of accompanying events could be used to explain every single time the way what we see today is the way it is. Whereas radioactive measurements are like 1% acceptable and 99% not. And once in a while you get two methods that are unreliable that agree together. That doesn't mean they're right. We would expect radiogenic minerals to indicate very large ages, and we would expect different elements in the same mineral 
or different minerals in the same formation to agree with each other. The fact that so many calculations fail to agree or to fall into a proper place in a strategic sequence, stratigraphic sequence. The stratigraphic sequence is what's expected. You find a radiometric dating system and you say, well, we'll take out those 97, we'll accept the three. See, they agree. A strong testimony that uniform processes do not constitute the norm in Earth history. The great number of discordant ages of anomalous leads and the like testify to the intense mixing activity of the deluge and the other catastrophic geologic events every single time. False assumptions. So the presuppositions which accompany today's dating procedures are to be questioned. Recall that the creation process, according to God's word, was begun and completed in six 24-hour days. An evening and a morning is a 24-hour day, even you Bible students. And, and the 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth day, those are 24-hour days. And when you have an evening and a morning, they're 24-hour days. And when the audience of God's word is people, man, they would understand it only in, as it's written, 24-hour days. Genesis chapter 1. Then after the fall, there began another process of thousands of years of devolution, not evolution, which went through an unimaginable change at the flood. Radiation content of elements in the earth most likely had different starting points than are assumed for today's dating experiments. The radioactivity in the elements within the earth were also inevitably affected by the dramatic changes during the worldwide volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and the consequent fall of the canopy and the ensuing flood in Noah's time, and then the one single ice age thereafter is explicable by catastrophic events beginning with the worldwide flood. The dating methods now used assume that the earth evolved over billions of years and that assume and that it never existed in the perfect form that it was in before the fall and the flood. Well, that's plausible. Why not? You weren't there. De today's devolution is not Sir Isaac, right? It's not the same as the creation process nor the same as the imaginary evolutionary one. Things are devolving, not evolving. One, for example, could not God have originally created certain specific amounts of non-radioactive elements for a purpose? Yes, lead, and all the other ones that are non-radioactive, to which the radioactive elements evolve into over billions of years, millions of years. But there was original lead. How do you know that rock didn't have original lead? Then you make the rock a lot older, but that radiation, the, the uh, U-235, didn't necessarily create that lead on the other end of the rock. This would be quite different from what modern day geologists presume is the status of the earth being the same as after the fall. In other words, it is very likely that within the core of the earth, God created radioactive elements packed in alongside those moderating non-radioactive elements like lead in order to provide a constant, consistently controlled nuclear reaction. Isn't this how we do it today? These controlling elements could very well have been the elements like lead, strontium-87, etc., which the radioactive elements evolve into after dispensing with their radioactivity. This would certainly throw off the dating history, which assumes zero non-radioactivity content at the onset. How do you know? We, we already know that there is original lead. So how do you know the original lead wasn't in that rock that you were examining? You don't know. You weren't there. According to the creation model and God's word, there must be non-radioactive elements originally present. Thus, the Earth can only be thousands of years old. Finally, if carbon dating is so accurate, how come it has been reported that some living snails and living trees were recorded as being 2,500 and 10,000 year old fossils? Didn't they see that snail move around? Did anybody know that tree was still alive? And you do carbon dating on it, that, that tree was dead 10,000 years ago. It's still growing leaves. This may appear to be many to be a surprising assertion that the evidence testifies to the flood and other catastrophic events rather than to millions of evolutionary years, but a little consideration should suffice to show its validity. The whole problem resolves, revolves around the basic assumptions implicit in all the radioactivity methods of measurement. In addition to the problems of measurement and alteration already discussed, there are two basic assumptions already present, always present. One is that all of the identified radiogenic isotopes has been derived from the parent isotope by radioactive disintegration. Simply not true. 
The other is that the rate of disintegration has always been the same as at present. Both these assumptions are absolutely necessary in order to obtain any kind of meaningful age measurement. But neither assumption can possibly be valid if the biblical account, the Bible account, is true. They implicitly deny the two divinely revealed facts of a genuine creation and at least one great discontinuity in, in the uniform processes of nature at the time of the deluge. Now, I'm not asking people who aren't religious to take the Bible as serious. Just rule it out. Read what it says accurately, language, context, and logic, and then say, no, this is not plausible. Let's move on to something we think more scientific. You haven't converted to biblical Christianity. You've just ruled it out. Then maybe we would all be silent. Evolutionists maintain that there are elements in the rock, such as radioisotopes, isotopes, which indicate an Earth age of millions, and in some instances, billions of years. There's no data scientifically known which can give a rock a uniform age. All of the processes for dating radioisotopic material and alpha particle decay known to science give a variant in age determination when various portions of the rock, same rock, are examined. Now, I've read an account where a rock was millions and millions of years old at one end and older than at the other end. Really, it's the same rock. And it sat there being rained upon. Don't you think the uranium might have been... Um, uh, solutioned out with rain pouring over it because it is soluble. When the alpha de particle decay rate is examined, which is the interpretive line of measurement, is found that it takes uranium 238 over 4 billion years to lose half its mass. The line of reasoning goes that it had to have been around for at least 4.5 billion years to have lost that much mass. This is not necessarily so. It really shows that U-238 was designed to be around for billions of years. And it was designed to be here for a useful purpose. It is obvious from the work of geophysicists that these isotopes were at one time inside the Earth. They were expunged or thrown out to the surface of the Earth. Volcanic earthquake, you know. What this demonstrates is that the interior of the Earth at some time in the past was a perfectly balanced thermonuclear heater. <clears throat> These isotopic elements are so arranged with moderating elements adjacent to them, the result is simply a controlled nuclear reactor. God designed the interior of the earth as such for the benefit of man. The presupposition that decay rates are uniform is wrong. Regardless of whether or not the original mineral was set to read a certain finite time at the instant of its creation, we still could not know for certainty what this original condition had been since we cannot know to what extent the rate of decay has varied since, since that time. Big, grandiose assumptions. That's why we have varied results within the same rock. It is possible, of course, to measure or estimate the decay rates as they exist now for each of the radioactive series and for each stage in the series, and this has been done. As we have seen, considerable questions still exist as to the proper value for many of these decay constants but the values of all the important ones are known to at least r the right order of magnitude. And of course, the claim is made that these decay rates never change, and that it is therefore legitimate to use them in the com computation of ages. Evolutionists claim that all applicable extremes of temperature, pressure, and physical state, chemical combinations, so, and so on, have been applied to the radioactive elements without any significant indication of resulting changes in the disintegration constants has never been tested that way. It is falsely claimed that no past change in terrestrial environments as conceived according to uniformitarian principles could have been outside the scope of these laboratory studies. Really, it is therefore also falsely maintained that the decay rates have never changed. This is nothing basically inviolable about these decay rates, however. There's nothing basically inviolable about these decay rates, however. This is proved by the fact that it's been found possible to change some of these of them at least slightly in the laboratories. With catastrophic events to an extreme, even more. External radiation exposure during creation and right after the flood provided a window of vastly greater external radiation, leading to immensely greater deterioration of parent elements. Also, juxtaposition of greater amounts of parent elements in the past means greater deterioration. More on this later.